Hello everyone, I'm Eero. Today, I want to show you guys how I painted the SD Nightingale in my own custom color scheme. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here you see one of the parts prepared for painting. I removed the nubs, seams, and mold lines thoroughly since any imperfections on the surface will show. Then I prepared Mr. Hobby 1500 finishing surface shade black and sprayed the paint onto the parts in thin coats. Priming is a great way to see any scratches or imperfections. So in this scene here, I sprayed the primer to see if I properly removed the seam. And I was happy to say I didn't see any seam line. Then I let the first coat dry before applying a second thin coat to get a nice coverage. When the primer was dry, I used GX Red Gold to paint the parts in gold. I also applied this color in thin coats. To show you guys how painting in thin layers would help, here is a difference between two parts where the left one was given two coats of gold. You can see that there's much better coverage on the left one. Next, I use GX Wendell Black to paint a gloss briche gradation. I thinned the paint a little more with thinner, changed my airbrush needle to 0.3mm, and lowered the PSI to get a better control of where I will apply this color. Then I apply this color to the edges, recesses, and panel line. Because the paint is very thin, as I spray on this color, the paint dries quickly. So by the time I go back to where I painted, I can quickly paint two thin coats for better coverage. With pre-shade applied to all the parts, I used GX Deep Clear Red to paint clear red. I thinned this paint more than usual, around 4 part thinner to 1 part paint. This is to not only allow the decrease in dry and cure time, but also slowly build up the color and achieve a wet glossy finish. To demonstrate, you can see in the photo the first layer barely changed the color. However, as I spray on thin coats, the color gets richer and glossier. So in total, during this painting process, I painted on four thin coats of clear red and left the parts to cure in a place where there's no dust flying around. When I was done applying the clear red, I painted other parts. For white parts, I primed them in Mr. Finishing Surface 1500 Gray. For black parts, I primed them in Mr. Finishing Surface 1500 Gray. I painted the parts in this order so I could use the leftover black primer to paint the pre-shade on the white parts. When the pre-shade was done and dried, I painted Gundam Color MS White 01 in 3 thin coats to get a pre-shading effect. After the white parts were done, I used Window Black to paint the black parts to get a glossy black finish, and I waited for all the paints to dry and cure. When the red clear paint was fully cured, I used Tamiya's polishing compound fine to polish the surface. I applied the paste to a polishing cloth or sometimes rubbed the paste with my fingers and used the compound to polish the surface. I made sure to go over all the surface to get an even finish. I then used Tamiya polishing compound finisher and gave another polishing to the surface. When I was done, I cleaned the garbage and excess compound with water. Just to show you whether it made any difference, here is an example. The left is the polished one. The effect is subtle, but light is much better reflected on the polished surface. I used Retributor Armor Gold to paint the thrusters and gold details on the model. Because I had to paint this color on glossy surface, I patiently painted several thin layers to get a solid coat. I used Abaddon Black to paint the recess shade on the gold details, other than the thrusters, and fix any mistake I made on the black parts.
Because I don't have any decals to use, I had to freehand some of the designs and use Retributor armor to paint. Once I was satisfied with the shape, I outlined the design with Abaddon Black. On the shield, I used Abaddon Black to fix the shape. Notice how the black paint looks different from the gloss black. I'm not worried at all since I know this is because the paint has a different finish. So when I apply a top coat over it, the looks gets unified. Tempor Guard Blue was used to paint the inside of the thrusters. I use Corax White to paint the white details. Gilman Flesh to panel line the gold details on the thrusters and the belly cannon. On the fuel tanks, I use Avenal Black to paint the panels with thicker lines. But for tinier lines, I use Gundam Panel Line Marker Brush Type to draw the panels and remove the excess with a tissue or a cotton swab. When everything was said and done, I went back to my spray booth. Using Weno Black, I painted more dark shadows on the red details that I thought were lacking. Once that was done, for all the red and black parts, I wanted to get a more lustrous, wet, glossy surface, so I airbrushed several layers of clear coat. I made sure there was absolutely no dust or garbage on the surface when I sprayed on the clear paint. If there were, I used a clean brush to dust off the parts. While I was waiting for the clear paint to cure, I used Blue Horde to paint the inside of the thrusters to get a glowing effect. When that was done, I went back to my palette. Since I was a little impatient, I made some mistakes while spraying the insides of the thrusters. So, I used Temporal Guard Blue, thinned with water down to a glaze-like consistency, and painted the outer area of the thrusters. Then, using White Scar, I painted the innermost detail inside the thrusters. Finally, to blend the blue transition inside the thrusters, I dry brushed on Blue Horror. The brush was big enough that it won't reach where I painted the white scar. To neat up any mistake, 50-50 mix of Retributor Armor and Stormhole Silver was used to paint the rim on the thrusters. And I also used X28 as a solution to wipe off speckles of paint that went onto the black details. Everything was painted at this point. So when the clear paints were fully cured, I polished them again using Tamiya compounds. I also polished the clear green lens to allow the light to reflect better. When everything was done, I cleaned all the parts with water, let them dry thoroughly, and assemble everything together. And finally, everyone, I present to you my custom Nightingale. If anyone wants to try out what I did, I highly advise you to be patient. Painting a clear coat and letting them cure takes a lot of time. That's all for today's video. If you liked this video, then leave a like. And if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, then leave them in the comment section below. This was Iro, and thank you for watching.